Hey guys, my adventure with Not Enough Tech started about four years ago when I got myself promptly this kit uh, containing 37 different sensors in one big box. That was pretty much everything I got inside the box and it took me a while to figure out how even to use one of these things. And having a background in programming, I never used Raspberry Pi or Arduino before. Basically, I was incredibly clueless. But thanks to the internet and hours spent on reading various posts about how to use sensors, how to hook them up, I managed to get a couple of them working. And four years later, I'll be honest, I probably used about 20% at best of whatever was in that box. So today I'm going to give you a tip that I wished someone had given me when I was starting. Now, Elegoo got in touch with me and asked me to present you with Super Starter Kit, which is their take on a clone of Arduino Uno. So why Starter Kit instead of shopping around and getting the best bank for your money? There's a couple of good reasons for it. Kits like this are super popular nowadays and they might be slightly more expensive than sourcing the components on its own, however, they're gonna be worth of your time for a couple of reasons. The most interesting components gonna be already included. You honestly don't need three different type of uh, shake sensors and two different types of read switches. It's simply not going to enhance your experience at all. What you do need is a set of instructions attached to every single component explaining you how to use it and how you could put it to practice. So let's take a quick look what's inside this box and I'm going to tell you the second part of my advice. So let's take a look inside and first, well, we've been invited back to 90s by Elegoo with CD. Who, who do even have a CD-ROM nowadays? Thankfully. You can download everything from their website and have their complete set of instructions there. On the lid itself, you've got pictures with itemized list of all components so you can look them up and recognize them, which is really, really handy. There are a couple of items I would strongly recommend you to try. First of all, the LCD display. So you will learn how to display text on the LCD. It's more complicated than you think. There's also a very useful power supply module which snaps on top of your breadboard and provides with 5 volts and 3.3 volt rails. Super handy if you work with a breadboard. Now, another two things that you're gonna be playing with is stepper motor and servo motors and the stepper motor module. It's very useful if you want to get into robotics and if your IoT is your game, then take a look at the 5 volt relay, which is great for controlling high voltages appliances. In addition to that, you probably want to play with DHT11, my favorite temperature and humidity module, great for beginners, and also shift register if you ever run out of spare pins. Apart from setup instructions, you'll find also the all libraries required to run the components in Arduino IDE, uh, three language versions, and uh, as you can see, the instructions are split into three parts. First, just uh, getting started, then uh, learning about individual modules, which contain uh, PDFs with relevant information about to how to connect them on the breadboard and how to run a sample code, including pictures. Last folder contains classes that teach you how to connect components together and how to interact with multiple components, which is something that's gonna get you started with projects. Now that you've tried a few things and you feel fairly comfortable with the breadboard, here comes my second advice. Go and find yourself a project, something that you're going to enjoy and something that you're going to use on a daily basis. For some time now, I've been thinking about stepping up my thumbnail game and presentation of certain things. Smaller components, I really wanted to have a turntable that I'll be able to use to rotate the object and, well, show off whatever gadgets I'm talking about next. A second thing was the thumbnails, which, well, let's Face it, I would take a random photo, slightly edit it in Photoshop, and that was it. So obviously, instead of reinventing the wheel, I would search the internet first to find out the best solutions to achieve those two. And I found myself a turntable and a really nice and simple backdrop that I could use for my photographic. Now that you selected the project ID as well, see it through. It's very important that you're gonna complete the project and overcome all the obstacles that you might encounter on the way. There is nothing more gratifying than seeing your project in action and enjoying it on a daily basis. So basically that's the goal for myself, turntable and the backdrop. 
So I've scoured the internet to find the best design because there is no reason to reinvent the wheel, even in my case, and I found this beautiful turntable and this uh, project for a backdrop stand that you can 3D print. I've coupled that with lights from Banggood and I got myself a really nice setup to enhance my thumbnails and provide you with a really interesting looking content. I knew exactly I've got all components in this kit that would make this turntable happen, but imagine my surprise when I actually was reading through Brian's post just to discover he used exactly the same kit to build one. So instead of writing all the instructions from a scratch again, I'm just going to link this for you so you could take a look and read it through and I'll provide you with helpful tips on how to overcome some of the problems I've encountered. My first tip is to use the hat provided in a starter kit. Remove the headers and also remove the reset button, otherwise they're not going to fit original design. The turntable design uses a couple of bits. So once you 3D print everything, start putting it together. Start with a screen. Now it uses four bolts and the pins are well exposed, so no problems there. Then add the joystick and I would suggest to, to actually hook it up from underneath. Just drill the hole in a plastic to root the cables. You'll thank me later. Next up is potentiometers, which is soldered to a piece of PCB. Try to keep it flat as possible and consider SMD, so mounting it on a surface, to keep it incredibly flat. Also, you can use a fixed resistor if you already know the value. More details in a tutorial. At this stage, I would leave the soldering for now because it's easier to mount the hat and screw everything into position. Add stepper motor into a designated place. Then add the ring with bearings just to try it out to see if everything runs smoothly. I'd strongly suggest you to use Teflon based grease inside to release any friction. Before you fix everything else in place, try to organize the space inside because it's gonna get really tight. So try to position servo and the stepper motor driver. Once you position that, it's time to add the front cover, then the plate, and finish up with the top of the joystick. LCD is gonna have the most of the pins, so you probably want to start soldering them. You can either use the pins or you can use the top of the pins to uh, fit the cables in place. The schematics are provided in the description in the associated article. The potentiometer to the left, it's controlling the brightness of the screen. So if you select the value, you can measure the resistance and use that value uh, with a fixed resistor. You might find it helpful to use the tweezers to get the cables in position uh, for soldering. Uh, one of the probably not the smartest moves, but looks uh, really neat is the fact that I've used stiff cables and oh, it was a pain to manage. So if you have a nice flexible cable, you're gonna benefit from that. Stepper motor is routed underneath the hat and connected directly to the driver. And the driver is powered by the USB. I've made additional hole to supply USB cable and supply five volts and two amps into the system, connecting the Arduino clone into the voltage input. Servo is connected as described in a reference, so there's no changes there, and I've used 3M tapes to secure the remote in place. I really like this solution when the servo simply is pressing on a Bluetooth remote a button to trigger the camera at regular intervals. It's really creative and I just simply like it. As for backdrops, I knew that I'm going to use bigger cardboard sheets. In my case, that was A1 in size. So the 3D printed parts weren't heavy enough. So I went to the garage and I used a piece of scrap wood to actually make a makeshift stand that would keep the separators in place and prevent the uh, piece of cardboard from going wherever it wants. So if you're new to electronics, take a look at the description of this video. We're going to find a link to this product and a couple of other kits that I've linked it there. So you could pick the one you want. Don't be afraid. It's less complicated uh, than you think. And with included tutorials and a lot of different informations available on internet, it's going to be a pleasure to work with and a really, really interesting way of spending your time. Four years seems like a long time and I actually can't believe how far I went. 
I hope you're gonna have a similar experiences and it's gonna be a great start to a new hobby. Okay guys, I hope you really like this video. As usual, you know how to YouTube work, so I don't have to explain that, but I do appreciate all the subscribes and likes guys. Uh, but the best way is to follow me on any given social media that you'll enjoy and like, that way you're always gonna get a notification when there is a new content. Okay, thanks so much for watching guys, and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Take care, bye!